Let's talk sustainability. People use resources from the environment to live, but sometimes they use too many resources. They don't always recycle, take really long showers, and drive two minutes to the 7-Eleven to pick up a big gulp. When you put a bunch of these people together, you get a city, a city that can have a large cumulative effect on the environment. Now, just to be clear, I'm not saying that cities are bad for the environment, just the opposite. A city dweller on average uses fewer resources than someone in the suburbs or the country. But when you get that many people together, you create a place that has significant negative environmental impacts. Cities are also a great scale to think about how to mitigate those impacts. And no city is more interesting to consider than Los Angeles. Yes, the city well known for its traffic and smog. I want to take a second to thank the sponsors of this video, Siemens, for hooking me up with planners from the LA mayor's office to tell me about the work they're doing. Thanks. Back to Los Angeles. The Los Angeles region has the third largest economy of any region in the world, after Tokyo and New York. It's the second largest city in the U.S. and is known by many as the City of Angels, La La Land, Tinseltown, and according to Wikipedia, Double Dubuque? Okay. Los Angeles doesn't really have a long history of being sustainable. The city grew in its early days thanks to the oil industry in the region. To provide water for the growing city, Los Angeles stole water from the Owens Valley. And Los Angeles embraced cars, freeways, and the resulting urban sprawl. For decades, those cars, combined with unfavorable geography and climate, led to hazy, smog-filled skies. To be fair to Los Angeles, many cities have struggled with some or all of these environmental concerns, but LA was really good at being bad for the environment. How can a city like Los Angeles become more sustainable? Well, what does sustainable mean exactly? It has been used so much to mean so many things that it's easy to think of it as an empty buzzword. But a generally accepted definition for sustainable development, the kind of sustainability that relates to cities, is development that meets the needs of the current generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. Basically, if one generation pollutes all the water so the future generations can't drink it anymore, that's not sustainable. This is why sustainability is important to cities like Los Angeles. Los Angeles is expected to add a half a million residents in the next 17 years. So not only must the air, water, and electricity be enough for LA's current population, but also its future population, which will be even larger. Los Angeles, like many cities throughout the world, believe they need a plan of action to grow sustainably. So the Los Angeles Mayor's Office set upon the task of developing that plan. They contacted nearly 90 stakeholder groups in the city, as well as all departments of the city government, to get input about what should be included in the plan. They conducted an audit to determine what LA was already doing well on the sustainability front. They worked diligently to take that input and transform it into coherent goals and objectives with a known current condition and measurable outcomes. The mayor's office called this plan the Sustainable City Plan and released it in 2015. The plan is divided into three thematic sections, the environment, equity, and economics. These aren't random categories, but a very common way for cities to approach sustainability. The framework is called the three E's of sustainability. Sustainable cities must balance all three E's while still achieving the definition of sustainable development. The three E's ensures that cities consider the needs of citizens from all racial and income groups when implementing policies, and it also ensures that the environmental policies don't wreak havoc on the local economy or bankrupt the city. Within each thematic section are goals and targets. I've seen a lot of plans in my day, and the goals and targets in this plan are incredibly visual and readable. The targets are also really measurable. For example, in the water section of this plan, they state that by 2017, they want to reduce per capita water use by 20%. By 2025, they will reduce imported water purchases by 50%, and by 2035, the city will source 50% of its water locally. These are clear, measurable objectives. And for the record, they did achieve that 2017 goal. They've achieved 55 of the 61 2017 outcomes, and even completed two of the 2025 objectives ahead of schedule. How do I know? Because they built an online data dashboard, updated quarterly, that allows anyone to check on the progress of the plan. With the 2017 deadline in the rearview mirror, the city is looking ahead to the 2025 deadline and already making some progress. As someone particularly interested in land use and transportation, these goals really stand out. Currently, 42% of building permits are issued in transit-oriented areas, but they're aiming for that number to be 57% by 2025. The non-car mode share numbers are 26% currently, 
but they want to get that number to 35% by 2025. Plans like this are only as good as the data they get to set and track objectives, and this plan has a lot of great data. I wonder where all this data came from. A lot of the data is collected already by city departments and cooperating stakeholders and repurposed for the sustainability plan. The city is continuing to look for new sources of data to set and track these objectives. One tool they're using is the Siemens City Performance Tool. It's a model that takes data on electricity, transportation, and building performance and gives the LA Mayor's Office a sense of what sustainability outcomes are ambitious yet achievable, exactly the kind of thing the plan needs. If the City of Los Angeles can achieve all of the 2035 goals in its plan, it will have officially shaken off its less than stellar track record on environmental issues. It will have reduced energy use in buildings by 30%, see only 5% of its waste reach landfills, reduce its urban heat island effect by 3 degrees, and ensure all residents will live within a half mile of fresh food. And this is all while LA's population is increasing substantially. These are ambitious but achievable goals, and if Los Angeles can do it, so can cities around the world.